Opportunities to level up your plane can be hiding in plain sight. In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at three Delta Blues turnarounds that will help you play better blues. Let's dig in. The first turnaround is based on one played by Johnny Shines in the song, The Wind Is Blowing. Johnny is a phenomenal Delta Blues player and this particular turnaround teaches us a very important lesson. Sometimes less is more. Okay, you may be thinking that this didn't sound very difficult. And I agree with you if your goal is just to play the notes, just play it straight. It's not that difficult, but that single note line in the first measure of this turnaround actually gives us an opportunity to pay attention to an often overlooked part of our playing. So let's take a look. We start this off by punching the E and then I'm gonna switch over to the first string only and just play this line. That's the first measure. I'm just climbing up the E minor pentatonic scale, open, and then with that little bluesy bend on the G there, up to the A, E, and then G, G, both with bends. Then the downbeat, I wanna head back to this E chord shape. You don't really have to, but I find it helpful um, just to go there, right? And then I'm choking down on the strings. I don't want this to ring. And while that is choked out, I'm gonna quickly get in position to play a B7. This is gonna happen on the and of one, so that's quick, right? Then I'm doing a brush up the top two strings, and then I'm gonna do this little move. It's a triplet, actually. I think of this as like strumming a flat pick, like a down, up, down. So down on the bass, fourth string, which is that D sharp, up, top three strings, and then down again. And then switch over the bass to the F sharp, and then pinch that as you drag through the top three strings of your B7. So this is a B7, but it's over F sharp. There's the F sharp in the bass. Bump the bass and then a breath stroke. I like these little breath strokes. They're just open strings so you can move your hand and then we're coming down for the downbeat of the next measure. So we've got this. Varied up the bass there, you can do that on your guitar. But the real difficulty, if there is any in this, is in the dynamics. I don't want to head into bar 12 with everything that I've got. Not in this case. I want to lay off and let that first string just kind of sing. I don't want to pluck it too hard. I'm not looking for this. Right? That's too much. That's too aggressive and it's going to take away from the impact that this busier strumming pattern has in bar 12. That's the moment where the energy needs to hit, right? We kind of want this sort of drop away, fall away feel in bar 11, the first measure of this turnaround. So I'm gonna try to play it like that, a little softer, right? That makes the notes actually ring pretty clear than than plucking them as hard as you can every single time. Again, that has its place, but here what I wanna do is balance the dynamics a little bit. A little bit quieter in the first measure of delivery, and then a little bit heavier in that second measure. When you hear Robert Johnson turn around, you know it. He gave us so many amazing turnarounds, and I've been playing a lot of them for years. But when I took a deeper look at one from Me and the Devil Blues, I noticed something. There's a little finesse in the turnaround that I missed for years. Let's dig in. All right, you can probably see what's difficult about this turnaround. We're holding the long A chord while moving down the fourth string chromatically. It's a tough one for me, which led me to playing a simplified version of this for a long time. And maybe you've played this simplified version too. But when we dig into this chord shape, you're gonna see why you might want to work toward playing it like this. It's that subtle finesse that we're after. The best approach to this turnaround is actually one that I can't quite pull off reliably, so I'll show you my workaround. But the best approach is this long A. Hold that bar across the second fret, strings four, three, and two, and then high A on top. Very common country blues chord shape. You need to know this. But then the simplified turnaround would just have you walk down while not really paying too much attention to the bar. And if you notice, I actually arched up and I ended up just muting strings three and two there. Wasn't too concerned about them. The fact is, I don't even need this index finger for most, okay, there, of this turnaround. But 
what's interesting is if we bar and then we push through, listen to what happens on strings uh, four and three. We get this chromatic move, we know we're doing that, but a cool little surprise happens. We get some cool harmony there because we're incorporating this A note on the third string, right? So that would be under the bar. Right? All while pedaling the high A. So it's a really cool thing. Our A's are stationary. They're not moving, but we've got that chromatic move down. And that, to me, is what makes this turnaround difficult, but it gives it a really nuanced sound. And I'll give you a couple of options there. That's my workaround, by the way, is to just pinch. I can pinch with my uh, bass uh, is the thumb and then my index finger on the third string. I can pull that off, right? While pedaling with my, I'm picking with my ring finger, the first string, right? The other option is to push through with your thumb and hit these two strings together right while pedaling that top note Charlie Patton is the father of the Delta Blues, and his playing is full of lessons for us to learn. But we're going to hone in on one of his many curveballs. This one is in a turnaround that comes from 34 Blues. <laughs> All right, the speed alone of some of this picking can be tough, but we're gonna look beyond that. And the subtle trick really in this turnaround shows up regularly in early blues, and it tends to trip up a lot of today's rock and blues players, myself included. This starts out with a cool country blues lick in C. That's the first measure. What we're doing is playing the C and then the minor third of C at the fourth fret, that's an E flat. I'm gonna play it with my pinky. Then we play the open first string. So we've got that minor third, major third interplay there. Go back to the C on the second string, A, and then back. Back to the open third string. Then for the last beat, this would be beat four, we're gonna pop an F note. So reach up to the fourth string, third fret, and by popping, you just kind of pick from under the string and out, like the direction is straight out from the guitar. You don't have to do this with any amount of force, you're not breaking a string or anything like that. It's just by getting under, we get that pop, okay? And then we finish off the measure with just the open third string and the C here from the second string. So that's from the chord. All right, now we could just make this a two bar turnaround and play C like this with a couple of Charlie Patton style, you know, brush ups like this. And we're gonna get to that, but not yet. We've got one measure in here in between. And what we're gonna do is hold this C and we're going to do something like that. We're going to play the bass and brush up top three strings. So one and, then we've got two triplets back to back. Two triplet, here comes three triplet, which is, it's a bit of a handful. We start with this, and by the way, my, the high note that you're hearing is the G. It's one and two triplet. That G is there for two triplet, and three triplet. Four trip. I've removed the chord shape, right? And I'm playing on the first string, second fret. And you brush up, you get the second string in there. Down again, same thing, but this time at the first fret. And then the open first string. So that takes us from one and two triplet, three triplet, four and. All right, so we should be done, right? Four and, but we're not. Five and. All right, so this measure is in 5-4. We've got an extra beat there. Fortunately, it's something we already know how to do. We've done before, and then we move into our Charlie Patton pinch on 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Simple measure, kind of strumming 
to set up the next vocal line while holding down our C major chord. Turnarounds are a ton of fun to play and they give us blues players an opportunity to let our unique voice come through. But that creates a great spot for us to level up our skills. The thing is though, this is all made better with good technique. So click right over here to pick up BGI's free finger picking quick start, which will help you get up and running with finger picking or just keep your fingers in shape if you're already a seasoned player. Click over there and I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, practice smart and play on.